This is a C++ implementation of the encryption and decryption processes in the RSA crypto system. So in my previous video, I talked about how you could go about coding a C++ program that could generate the public and private keys in RSA on the basis of two prime number inputs. The code that you see on the screen right now is the same code that I wrote and explained in my previous video that features functions that can generate different values of the public and private keys for the key generator. So right now I'll just give a really brief overview of this code, um, but if you'd like to know more about how and why I coded this, I encourage you to check out my last video that gets into the specifics a bit more. But for right now I'm just going to explain all of these functions pretty briefly and then get on with the primary purpose of this video. So firstly, this prompter function prompts the key generator to input two prime number inputs. And then this primality check function checks to make sure that those two inputs were in fact prime inputs. Once primality is ensured, the calculate n function calculates the product of p and q as n. And then the calculate phi function calculates the phi of that product n. The calculate e function uh, then finds an appropriate value for the encryption exponent on the basis of the value of phi n, and then the calculate d function uh, likewise finds an appropriate value for the decryption exponent on the basis of the values of e and phi n. Then in my int main I call my functions so that when I build this program and enter in two prime inputs, say 53 and 61, I get corresponding values of n, phi n, e, and d generated for me and my program terminates successfully. So in this video, I'm going to add to this code and talk about how you can code functions that will encrypt and decrypt messages for you. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the Boost Multi-Precision Library. In my program, I'm going to be dealing with extremely large numbers. Encryption and decryption in RSA encryption often require exponentiation involving really large exponents. Even in this program, when I'm working with really minuscule prime numbers in comparison to the ones usually used in RSA, when I raise a secret message M to the encryption key power, and even more so when I raise a ciphertext message C to the decryption key power, I'm going to get really colossal results. One of the disadvantages of C++ is that it isn't really as equipped to deal with huge number numbers as other programming languages, say, like Python are. Uh, C++ can't really handle numbers bigger than 2 to the 64th power by itself before it goes kind of berserk, so I need to use this, what's called the Boost Multi-Precision Library, uh, to give C++ the capability to deal with the really big numbers that I'm going to be needing to deal with in this program. Downloading and linking Boost to whatever IDE you're using can be pretty finicky sometimes, and a lot of how you use Boost uh, depends on whether you're using a Mac or you're using a Windows computer, um, and on which IDE you're using. This is what works for me specifically, being on a Mac and using Xcode. So I'm going to go to this website, I'll link it in the description down below, and uh, click on this link. So this is going to put uh, this zip file in my downloads, and I can drag this to my desktop as I've done, um, and then double click on it, and it's going to work for a little while and then produce uh, this folder. Okay, so after you've produced that file, you're going to want to navigate to terminal, which looks like this. Go ahead and open it up, and next to that dollar sign that appears, uh, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is check for the existence of a directory. So I'm going to run the command ls slash usr slash local. And what this is going to do is show me the contents. ls is going to show me the contents of the directory slash usr slash local. So when I run this, I can see everything that I have in that specific directory. Now for you, if you, you run this command and you get the output no such file or directory exists, you're going to need to create the directory slash usr slash local. And the way that you're going to do that is by using the sudo command. 
so you can write S U D O M K D I R slash U S R slash local. And this is going to create that directory for you. So I can hit enter. I'll be prompted for my password. And then I'll hit enter on that. And then I get the output that the file exists. But for you, if your file uh, slash USR slash local does not exist, you're going to get output that says that your file now exists after you run this command. And what the sudo command does is it gives you the downloading permissions that a super user has. On a Mac, um, by default, you're not the super user, um, even if you're on your own personal computer. So that's why this sudo command needs to be run if you don't have this directory. Okay, so now I'm going to navigate to my boost folder on my desktop. So I'm going to say change directory uh, slash users slash my username uh, slash desktop since my boost folder is on my desktop uh, slash boost underscore one underscore 74 underscore zero and I'm going to hit enter and now I'm going to run dot slash bootstrap uh, dot sh space uh, dash dash prefix equals slash usr slash local slash boost underscore one underscore 74 uh, underscore zero and I can now hit enter on this and this is going to run for a few moments and when that has finished running you're going to see this line with your username and the dollar sign next to it again and you're going to uh, run the command sudo again, uh, dot slash v2 install. So you can then hit enter on this command, at which point your computer is going to start to work on installing the boost library for you. And it's also probably going to start sounding like an airplane revving its engines. So you're probably going to want to be connected to a power source while this installation is happening. I'm not going to run this command, as I do already have boost installed, um, but you'll know that things have worked when you see this original line with your username and the dollar sign next to it again. Okay, so I can now navigate back to my Xcode project, and you can click right here, and you're going to uh, get to a page like this, and then you can click on build settings and you're going to search for uh, header search. Um, so right here next to this header search paths, you're going to double click here, click this little plus button, and you need to add a new path. So here you're going to type slash USR slash local uh, slash boost underscore one underscore 74 uh, underscore zero and uh, slash include slash. Okay, now you're going to want to go to uh, library search paths. So do the same thing, double click here, a plus sign, and this time you're going to type in slash USR slash local slash boost underscore one underscore 74 uh, underscore zero uh, slash lib slash and then enter and this is effectively helping to link the boost library uh, to Xcode and so now I can just navigate back to main.cpp and I'm going to write in an include statement so I'm going to say uh, include uh, boost slash multi precision slash cpp underscore int dot hpp I'm going to say using a boost multi precision uh, cpp underscore int and hopefully after all of this you'll have boost ready to go on your project 
and we are thankfully ready to start doing some coding. So I'm going to get started here uh, right after my public declaration uh, of the calculate D function. And I'm going to create a boost um, multi precision uh, CPP int uh, function that I'm going to call encrypt. I am also going to create a boost um, multi precision uh, CPP int variable that I'm going to call m. Uh, M null. I also just need an unsigned M that's going to serve as my secret message. Then I need another boost variable that I'm going to call C, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to call this C. And this is going to be my ciphertext message. And this is going to be my result of decryption. And this m null is going to be what my decryption function is going to uh, calculate. So I want this to be distinct from my unsigned m because I want to compare the two and ensure that they're the same um, and thereby ensuring that my decryption function functions the way that it's supposed to. Go down here. And I'm going to start writing the implementation for the encrypt function right beneath uh, the implementation for my calculate D function. So I'm going to say boost uh, multi precision uh, CPP underscore int RSA crypto system encrypt. And I'm going to start my implementation. Now, in RSA encryption, uh, encrypting a secret message m involves raising that message m uh, to the power of e and taking whatever results from that exponentiation, uh, dividing it by n, and then taking the modulus of that division. And then that's going to um, result in a ciphertext message c. So the first thing that I want to do in this function uh, is C out a prompt for a uh, integer message M to encrypt. I'm then going to see in the value of M that I get. And I'm going to use the power function or the pow function to raise M to the E power. So I'm going to temporarily let temporarily write uh, c is equal to pow m e. And what the pow function does is it interprets this first value that you feed it. This first value is the base and this second value as the exponent that you want to raise that base to. So pow m e is going to raise m to the e power for me. So now I need to divide m to the e power by n and find the modulus or remainder of that division. So I'm going to put this entire thing in parentheses and say mod n. Now when I uncomment this out, my code's not actually going to run and it's going to give me an error message. So I can solve two problems at once and stop my program from outputting this error message while also giving it the capability um, to deal with the really big numbers that are that are involved in this exponentiation. So what I'm going to do to fix that is add in a bunch of boosts in front of my variables and my pow function. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it in front of this m variable that I have and then put parentheses around my M. I'm also going to add in a boost multi-precision in front of my PAL function. 
and then another boost multi precision CBP int. in front of my entire result. And I'm going to add parentheses for the mod n. So what exactly am I adding in all of these boosts? Well, again, when I try to raise a big number like m is liable to be to an exponent, I'm often going to get a huge result that C++ just can't handle in its plain vanilla format. So I have to bring in boost and designate functions like pow to use boost uh, so that C++ doesn't output wrong answers for my exponentiation. So this exponentiation using boost is going to work, but I can't guarantee that this level of exponentiation will work if you don't use boost. So after this, I can simply return C, and that's the encryption function. Now for the decryption function, I'm going to go back up here and create another boost function that I'm going to call not encrypt, but decrypt. So I'll go ahead and change this to decrypt. Okay, so now I can go back down here and write my implementation for the decryption function uh, right below my impl implementation for my encrypt function. So I can just copy this, paste it down here, uh, call it decrypt instead of encrypt, add in my brackets. And as you'll recall, the operation for reobtaining M from a ciphertext message C is to raise that ciphertext message C to the decryption exponent D, and then divide the result of that exponentiation by M and take the modulus of that division and this should result in the original secret message m. Now I can simply copy this function that I have up here, paste it here, but instead of c I'm going to set this equal to m null, and instead of working with m and e I'm working with c and d and then I can simply return m null. And I know that if m null and m, if those two values match up, uh, if they've got the same value, then I know that everything has worked according to plan and I've successfully decrypted the ciphertext message. So now for the fun part, I'm going to test to see if my encryption and decryption functions really work. So I've already created an object of the class RSA crypto system called object one. And so I'm going to see out object one uh, dot encrypt. And this is going to test my encrypt function, of course, and I'll do the same thing for my decrypt function. So now I'm going to run my program. And I'll enter in a prime number 53 for P and a prime number 61 for Q. And I get my corresponding values of N, Phi, N, E, and D. And then I'm going to choose to encrypt uh, the message Hi, which are the um, H and I are the eighth and ninth letters of the alphabet. So I'll choose 89 to encrypt. And so my program outputs 206 as the ciphertext message C, and then it spits 89 right back out again as the decrypted result. So this is M null, and then this is my original value of M, and they match up, so I know that my decryption function works. So both my encryption and decryption functions are working exactly as they should be. And that's how you code functions that will encrypt and decrypt messages for you in C++ using Boost. Well, as always, I hope this was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and stay safe out there.